Welcome to our presentation on the future tense and the passive voice. Here's the basic principle of the future. You simply use the present tense in Deutsch. So if you're going to say you're going to do something, just use the present tense. Basically, the present tense in Deutsch is a much bigger and incorporates many more meanings than um, the simple English present. English has many different ways of expressing actions in present time and future time. So for example, looking at English words I bring or I do bring, all those things in Deutsch are simply ich bring. Same thing with I'm bringing or I'm going to bring. These are things that in English are technically um, present tenses, present progressives, but they often imply future, like um, I'm bringing it tomorrow, you might say. Once again, all those forms in Deutsch are simply ich bring, the present tense. Even things like I'll bring or I shall bring in English, which are definitely markers of the future tense. Once again, in Deutsch, the most common way of, those, of saying those things is simply ich bring. So, the English future tense, almost always the best way of translating that is with the present tense in Deutsch. Now, there is a way in it to form a separate future tense, and you could use it to emphasize the fact that it's going to happen in the future. And the way you do that in Deutsch is you use a modal verb. The most common modal vor verb, especially among Mennonite speakers, is zähle, zähle. Technically, this verb means to count, like to count from 1 to 10, or it often has the meaning of to intend to do something. And you can see how that secondary meaning of intend could kind of get stretched into just the future tense. And that's what it's often used as, as, a, as, a, as to imply the future tense. Zähle, zählt. Now, this is a modal verb, so that means you have to use the modal word order that we've seen now in, uh, in previous lessons. Where you use an infinitive, all modals take the infinitive, and the infinitive goes to the end. So, in this case, it's a zählt do bleive. Literally, he will here stay. Bleive means to stay. A zählt do bleive. And you would translate that as, he'll stay here, he will stay here. Atzelt do bleibe. Zelt zel is perfectly regular. So you just use the present tense of it. If you could translate it even as, he intends to stay here. But normally, the translation would be, he will stay here. Now there is an, another modal verb that's quite common. This is more common amongst, um, in North Berks County, other places like that among non plain speakers, and that's water, uh, excuse me, water, water. Technically, that means to become, like uh, to become something, but it often has the, the sense of will, like you're, you will do something. Now, Mennonites and Amish never use this, or at least in my experience, don't use this to form the future tense. They'll use tsela, some use figura, or other verbs like that. And in fact, if you use water, water, they'll often get confused by what you're trying to say. But amongst other, in other dialects of Pennsylvania Dutch, water is the main way. And there are various subversions of this too. It's a word that changes from dialect to dialect. So some places they say vera instead of water. But we're going to use water here. It's the most commonly written form. So water is another modal verb you can use to form the future tense, and water is a bit irregular. So let's look at the forms of water. Like I say, they're slightly irregular. Ichwa would mean I shall, ichwa. You will would be du washed, du washed. He, she, it will would be a wat. She will is si wat. S will would be s wat. We shall do something or we will would be ma water, ma water. You will would be dear what. And they will would be see water. So 
a bit irregular. Ihwa, duwash, awat, mawara, diawat, siwara. Now, once again, that's a modal, so that means it uses the infinitive, and the infinitive goes to the end. In this case, we'll use the infinitive braha, which means to need. So here's a sentence. Awat sel braha. That means he will need that. Sel means that. Awat sel braha. He will need that. Here's another example. Siwara de gaul rider. Siwara de gaul rider. That means they will ride the horse. They will ride the horse. Siwara de gaul rider. Now, let me give you a warning with these modals. Um, these modals can be used to translate the future or to imply the future tense, but they often carry a nuance of probability or possibility. So they're often not just kind of a very straightforward future tense, in which case you're almost always better off using the present tense in Deutsch, but they often carry a slight nuance of probability or possibility. We can even do this in English a bit. So, for example, if you told, I don't know, your teenager said, Johnny, you said, Johnny, mow the lawn. And Johnny says, I'm mowing it tomorrow. That's one form he might say. Or he might say, I'll mow it tomorrow. And I would say the difference between I'm mowing it tomorrow and I'll mow it tomorrow, there's a difference there in nuance. And uh, that in Deutsch, that difference is even bigger. So let's think about a sentence like this. Ich bring's Maria. I'm bringing it tomorrow. That's implying the future time. It's very straightforward. There's no real hint of probability or possibility in that. Ich bring's Maria. You're just telling them that you're going to bring it tomorrow. But in a sentence like this, Ich was Maria bringe, which you could also translate it as I'll bring it tomorrow. But there is a, a, a hint that maybe it won't happen. Ich was Maria bringe. You're kind of you're, you're implying that you're going to bring it tomorrow, but somehow there's kind of a, because you're saying it's probable, there's also a hint of possibly not creeping into it. Ich was Maria bringe. I'll bring it tomorrow. So there is a difference in nuance um, in, the, in, the, in, in these two phrases. Ich bring's Maria, very simple, straightforward. It's going to happen. Ich was Maria. I'm going to bring it, or I will bring it tomorrow, but there's a slight sense of probability uh, creeping in. And with the sense of probability comes in also the idea that maybe it won't happen. It's probably going to happen. Now, translating the probably itself, it would be prob would be putting it too far, right? That's why I put it in brackets. It's kind of a nuance of um, in the sentence. So that's the future. Let's think about passive voice. Now, don't let the kind of grammar term here scare you, passive voice. You know what these things are. Let's, the easiest way to describe it is just to give examples. Here's the active voice. I am making it, right? I is the subject and it's doing the verb making. I am making it. The passive would be, it is being made. And the passive, the it, isn't actually doing the making. It's the thing that's being made. So that's the difference between the active and the passive. The passives often have these, in English, these strange circumlocutions, being made, or being done, or being watched. They often have that strange circumlocution. Passive, it is being made active, I am making it. So that's the passive. We understand what the passive is. How do we do that in Deutsch? Well, in Deutsch, you use that modal verb, water, Water. Well, you use that verb, water, water, which technically means to become. That's its core meaning. However, water, when it's used with the infinitive, that implies the future. But if you want to use the passive voice, you use it with the past participle. So you use water, water with the past participle, not the infinitive. If you use it with the infinitive, it means future. If you use it with a past participle, then it becomes the passive voice. Now, that's why we're treating the passive voice in the same lecture as the future, because the future can use water and the passive voice can use water. 
Let's take a really basic sample, a sentence like this. Ich mach es sauerkraut. I'm making the sauerkraut. Ich mach sauerkraut. Let's say we want to turn that into um, something else. Let's say we're going to make it a passive. Es sauerkraut wat gemacht. The sauerkraut is being made. You notice it's, it's quite like the English, right? In, in the active, ich mach es sauerkraut, I'm making the sauerkraut. Right? The sauerkraut's the object, it's at the end. When you make it passive, of course, it becomes the subject. Es sauerkraut, the sauerkraut, va, is being, or is becoming, gemacht made. And that would be perhaps the most literal translation of that sentence. A sauerkraut wat gemacht. The sauerkraut is becoming gemacht, made. But normally we would translate that as the sauerkraut's being made. A sauerkraut wat gemacht. Notice you're using the past participle, gemacht. And that is very different from when you use the infinitive with water, right? This sentence here, a wat sauerkraut macha, means he will make the sauerkraut, right? Wada when the with the infinitive maha means future tense. Awa sauerkraut maha. He will make the sauerkraut. So water with past participle, like a sauerkraut wa gemach, that means passive, the sauerkraut is being made. Awa sauerkraut maha with the infinitive future tense. He will make the sauerkraut. Well, if you've been following these lectures from the beginning, you're now pretty darn advanced, I would say. So you're ready for such complicated sounding things like the past tense of the passive voice. Now, let's take that basic sentence. A sauerkraut wat gemacht. The sauerkraut is being made, right? Let's say we wanted to make that passive. Well, what on earth would we do? Well, I'm sorry, let's say we wanted to make that past tense. What would we do? Well, remember how you make past tenses. You use a helping verb like ich hab or ich bin, and you use the past participle. So in this case, we've already got one past participle, gemacht. So we want to take that wat, that word that means to become, and we want to make that past tense. So we're going to use the past participle of water, water. And as we can see, the second form there is water. So that's the past participle. And it, that has an asterisk. So that means the helping verb we're going to use is ich bin, du bist, a, is, c, is, s, is. Um, so we're going to use that helping verb is and the past participle water. So what happens when we do that? This is what we get. Es sauerkraut is gemacht water. Now, the easiest way of translating that would be like the sauerkraut was made, right? Es sauerkraut is gemacht water. The sauerkraut was made. You could also translate that even as things like the sauerkraut was being made and things like that. But the easiest way of translating that is the sauerkraut was made. But what have we done? We've kept the gemacht and now we've turned the wat into the past tense by having the is water, right? That would be the past tense of water, water, is water. Past participle is water. Helping verb is is. Es sauerkraut ist gemacht worden. So that was pretty complicated. Passive voice, past tense. If you didn't follow it all, that's okay. Well, this is pretty advanced Deutsch already. Es sauerkraut ist gemacht worden. The sauerkraut was made. Okay, let's go on to some straightforward vocabulary. Bleibe, gebliebe, means to stay or to remain, and its helping verb is usually ich bin. So Ich bin gebliebe, I stayed. Bleibe, gebliebe. Remember these verbs that end in v, they often have a b sound, right? So if ich bleib would mean I stay. Ich bleib, or I will stay, or I'm gonna stay. Ich bleib. Brauche, gebraucht, means to need something. It can also mean to powwow. Now, if you don't know what powwow means, I recommend you Google um, Pennsylvania Dutch powwow. And uh, powwow, this is basically uh, a kind of folk medicine or a kind of faith healing. 
uh, that was quite common in um, in Pennsylvania Dutch country. But its basic meaning of brach or gebrach is to need. Like if you need something, like if I you need a bag, you'd say ich brach ein Duk. I need a I need a bag. Ein Duk is a bag. Hoka koch means to sit. Notice how the gh kind of makes a k sound. Hoka koch to sit. Do gadu means to do something. It's the usual verb for do. Um, this doesn't actually come from English. There is a there's a German verb in Standard German which is tun, um, and this verb comes from that German verb. Now it happens to look exactly like and sound exactly like the English one. So there you go. Uh, do remember those infinitives that end in h. If you ever add an e in, after them in the present tense, they have an n. So ich do is I do, but we do would be ma duna. That n comes in. Ich do ma duna. If you don't know what I'm talking about, review that lecture on present tense part two. Quora quora means to drive. Quora quora. And they could refer to uh, driving a wagon or driving a buggy, but also to drive a car or to drive horses. All kinds of senses of drive. Fora, fora. Sailor, sail, we've already encountered. Water, water, we've already encountered. Sumaha, sugmach, means to close. Sumaha, Zukmach. Notice that that is a separable prefix verb. That's what that little dot indicates. And the fact that in the past participle, the GE comes in between the Tsu and the Mach. Those things indicate that it, the Tsu is a separable prefix. So in the present tense, it goes to the end. So if I would say, if I wanted to say, I close, I would say, Ich mach Tsu. I close, Ich mach Tsu. If I said, however, I closed, I would say, ich hab zugemacht. To open is often is also a separable prefix verb. Uf maha, uf gemacht, uf maha, uf gemacht. The word for door is die dia, dira. Sometimes in some dialects this is pronounced der, die der. We're going to use dia. Die dia, dira. There are actually lots of words for horse and buggy with various nuances. So you could say buggy for a buggy. You could also call it a war, which means a, more like a wagon. Uh, you could call it a dachweckli, and that's uh, like a covered wagon or a covered buggy, a dachweckli. Uh, and another word for it is four. Four technically means like the team of horses that pull the uh, the wagon or the buggy. But we'll have the four, four. You can see it's etymologic, etymologically connected with that verb for to drive. The four, four is a horse and buggy or a team of horses. Hochdech is how you say sit down. Literally you're saying seat yourself or something like that from the verb hokka. Hok dich, sit down. So you might remember that phrase earlier on um, of es dich sat, which means to eat yourself full or to eat up. So if you were inviting someone to table, you might say hok dich und es dich sat. Sit down and eat up. I'll leave you with that. I'm getting hungry. So. Max Scoot.